I'm going to start off by sharing a story, a Zen story that really helps put this into perspective for me. And the story is called Working Hard. Now, the way that this goes is that a student goes to his master to learn martial arts. And he says to him, he says, Master, I'm going to work as hard as I can. I'm going to put all my effort in. I'm going to put all the, all the time that I possibly can. I'm going to train days and nights to master this martial art that you've taken so many years to master. How many years will it, will it take me to do so? And the master says, well, it'll take you 10 years. And he goes, okay, well, what if I work twice as hard as everybody who's ever done this? Then how long will it take me? The master stops and pauses for a moment, and he, he thinks to himself, and he replies to the student, he says, 20 years. So the whole point of this story is to recognize this principle of integral effort. The reason being is because just because the student thought that he was going to work harder didn't necessarily mean that it was going to go faster. And that's one of the problems that we all face when it comes to the amount of effort that we're putting into something, the how hard we're trying or how hard we're attempting to get a certain result. The thing is, when we become attached to the result, when we become attached to the outcome and we forget about the process, we end up engaging in the delusion of expediency and sometimes control. We're trying to control the process. We're trying to be expedient because we want to get there. We want to have that feeling of arrival. And the problem comes when we attempt to do that, we end up burning ourselves out and we end up missing a lot of what is actually learned in the process. So one of the reasons why I love this particular Zen story is because it illustrates that, right? If we're just going as hard as we can at something and trying to learn it, what we're going to do is we're going to actually miss the whole process along the way because we're so set on the outcome. And the idea here is, it's that whole saying of stop and smell the roses. And this happens when you're practicing anything. If you want to get good at anything, if you're trying to rush the process, if you're trying to be expedient with it, what's going to end up happening is you're going to miss it and you're going to miss key components or key lessons that need to be learned along the way. And as someone who is a martial artist myself, I've been through a lot of that, that, that that's talked about in that story, right? I've had periods of time where I was just trying so hard to get to the next level, to get good, to be competition ready, that I've actually ended up hurting myself or getting injured in a lot of those times because I wasn't present in what I was actually doing. So integral effort is about being present in the process and working as hard as you can, giving the, the amount of effort that you need to give into a process up until the point where if you went any more, you'd have to stop. So it's this idea of sustainability. It's this idea of creating a flow. One of the ways that at least I use this in my own life is I follow the protocol of Faraz Zahabi, who was George St. Pierre's coach when George St. Pierre was champion in the UFC. And Faraz Zahabi believes in training in this flow zone where he, nece he, he doesn't necessarily have his athletes go to a 10 out of 10 in exertion. And being in the martial arts culture, being in jujitsu, uh, being an athlete myself who's going to the gym, there's this whole trope about, you know, beast mode or no days off or <laughs> all these different things that would cause you to push your body to limits and redline your body every time you went to work out and train. And Faraz Zahabi actually goes against this. He doesn't believe in doing this. He believes in creating a, a, a whole volume to your training through consistency and through going to a seven out of 10 in your training rather than a 10 out of 10. Now, this is different than if somebody is, let's say, if we're referring to the martial arts example, if somebody's training for like a UFC title fight and they're going to do a camp that's eight weeks long, right? A two, a two month camp. There is a container there. So one thing to, to remember about integral effort is that when you are engaging with an intention of discipline rather than expediency, the way to think about this is the amount of effort that you're putting in needs to be one in which that you can recover from based on the, t the amount of time that you're actually executing on it. So if, let's say, somebody's going to a 10 out of 10 on most days when they're doing a training camp for a fight, but it is in a container of eight weeks, let's just say, that is very different than just going to a 10 out of 10 every day, every single week, just because you want to achieve this status of beast mode in your workouts. Totally different. Because... 
what that container is accounting for is the actual recovery time that's going to come afterwards. It's not saying I'm going to train this way forever because that wouldn't be integral effort. That wouldn't be engaging in an intention of discipline. Rather, that would be engaging in a delusion of control as well as expediency at the same time in that type of training. But instead, if there wasn't a container, if there wasn't a specific thing that somebody's training for, and they instead decided, okay, well, I'm going to maintain a flow and a consistency and, and increase my volume, like Faraz Zahabi would suggest for his fighters, that is a totally different way of training. So again, a lot of this is not just based on the intensity that you bring, but what is the container of in which you're placing that intensity of training or of effort? It could be the, sa the same thing. If we took this out of the martial arts example, we put this into maybe a creative or business example. If there was a person, let's say they're they're writing a book or they're creating podcasts like like we're doing now, and you're preparing for a big series, if a person is is creating content over and over and over again in order to actually create this output or to create a launch for a product or a show or let's say a book, and they're working really really hard, they're working kind of days and nights, putting everything into it within a specific container of time, that's okay. But if somebody's just working like that for the sake of working like that, eventually that person's going to burn out because what we're doing is we're not giving ourselves a chance to recover. We're not creating a sustainability because putting in an effort that is driven by expediency, driven by the desire to get there and the attachment to the outcome of that feeling of arrival. So the idea here is to put in as much effort as you can in a way that you can continuously do it forever. And if you do need to put in more effort than that for something specific, the idea is to use a container or a fixed period of time where you know what the exit is, you know what the out is. And, and that way you can practice integral effort in whatever it is that you do it, whether that's physical training or whether that's doing something with work or something with uh, something else with your health. Using a container is one way to mitigate that sense of effort. 